Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center, and today we're gonna, I got this mosquito. Get away, mosquito. Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center, and today I wanted to talk about why in the world so many people are starting to process rabbits, and why, you know, why are they choosing this cute animal over the traditional cow? You know, why are they not buying the food in the stores? We're gonna talk about what rabbit meat tastes like. If you guys are interested in that, be sure to stick with us. Here we go. We make videos to help you with your rabbitry, so if that interests you, be sure to click subscribe and the bell so you know when our videos are coming out. Today it's pretty windy, so hopefully it's not too bad with the microphone. Uh, so I'll try to do my best with the editing, but let's talk about why, why is rabbit farming taking off? So why wouldn't folks just go to the store? Why don't you just go to the store and buy the meat? Well, over the years, there's been several different investigations and studies, as well as documentaries on Amazon and Netflix you can watch right now about these big meat companies. Agriculture in the US has built this country, but we have so many people and we're producing so much and the demand is so high, it takes so long to get all this meat to these stores in order to get, get it to the stores and not have it covered in bacteria, they have to use a lot of chemicals. And in some cases, they're, they're raising so many animals, so much livestock that the conditions are less than good. It's dirty. Bacteria, even the conveyor belts are just breeding grounds for bacteria. So in order to keep this meat edible, actually the U.S. Department of Agriculture doesn't require any chemical used previous to the processing to be put on the labeling, to be included in the ingredients or any of that, which is scary. There's, there's chemicals like rack dopamine, which has been banned in over 160 countries mm -hmm. because of the health, health defects. And the US Department of Agriculture has lobbyists that work really hard to circumvent all these regulations to come up with a new drug or a new antibiotic in order to keep this monster machine running. Our Europe hasn't even did business with the US Poultry Department since the 90s because of the way we raise our birds. So we're using things like carbon monoxide and ammonia sprays, chlorine baths to get the bacteria off these animals. They, so they don't use growth hormones anymore but they're using antibiotics which work like growth hormones that make the animal bigger and leaner. These growth retardants to prevent most of E. coli, salmonella, and listeria. So there's a lot of chemicals in this meat and the list goes on. I'm not even covering everything and, and a lot of times unless you're you know, a scientist, or chemist rather, you're not gonna know what that ingredient is or does anyway. So, this is why folks are choosing to grow their own. What kind of people are doing it? Well, it's all kinds of people. You know, folks that don't have a lot of money, folks that have a lot of money, folks that just love raising animals or having animals around, love watching beautiful things grow and from a, you know, from a baby to a junior to a senior animal. It's such a big misconception that folks think that farmers or people that are raising animals to slaughter them don't care about their animals. You know, folks that are getting all worked up over these uh, rabbits being slaughtered, in most cases have a pet rabbit. And I completely, I can completely appreciate that. My wife raised pet rabbits when she was a kid and it took years for her to be on board with, with rabbit farming, raising rabbits for, for meat production. And now, finally, you know, after the education and everything, learning about how it all works, she loves it just like I do. Most folks that are getting angry about the, the rabbits being raised don't know about 4-H, they don't know about FFA, they don't know about these programs that have been around for over a hundred years helping families and kids, children, learn how to raise animals. Animal husbandry is, is the, the care the caring for animals and raising your animals, learning about them, learning about their genetics and trying to raise even better livestock. I tell you what, 
raising your kids like that, I can't recommend a better way. It's keep them busy, give them chores, give them work to do, give them something so they have a sense of accomplishment. Who's raising these rabbits? Well, the, the salt of the earth are raising livestock and they try to do the best job they can. You know, they try to create a, a comfortable environment. I raise my rabbits so they have a good life. Your breeders are on the property for years. You know, to me, they're like pets. You know, that I mean, there's an agreement where they're gonna produce for me and I'm gonna try to give them the best life I possibly can. But the litters, that's a different situation. Those litters are raised and produced specifically with meat production in mind. So a lot of these rabbits are raised for breeders, for future breeders. So they go on to raise and produce for other folks. I take a lot of pride in it. I enjoy these, these animals, having them. I look forward to coming out in the morning, in the evening, I spend time with them, I pet them and I enjoy watching the litters grow. That said, when it comes to processing time, I've learned over the years how to disconnect and process that animal. Why do you choose such a cute animal? Why would you choose a cute rabbit versus a cow, a traditional cow or, or pig? You know, why can't you just process the ugly animals? Processing rabbits isn't easy at first. Rabbits are incredibly cute. There's no denying that. So someone who has never dispatched an animal before wasn't raised like that, that takes some practice. And we have a video to help you. I'll put it up in the corner to get into the right mindset for that first dispatch day because you have to remind yourself why you're doing it. You don't stare your rabbit in the eye and until you start crying. And when it comes time to dispatch your rabbit, you're going to choose a way where you can humanely dispatch your rabbit. You know, we want to give your rabbits the absolute best life you can. And when it comes to your breeders, they're going to be with you for years. But when it comes to the litters, we're talking about a good short life and a quick bad second on dispatch day. You know, we want to do it in the quickest and most safest and most painless way we can. And there's several different ways to dispatch your rabbit. I'll put a video up in the corner that will show you several different ways. Why not cows? Why not pigs? Why not? Well, Cows and pigs and especially cows, you know, if you have a cow, you better have, you better have an acre of land. If you have two cows, you better have two acres of land. You know, cows take up a lot of real estate. Rabbits don't. You can feed the same amount of food to a rabbit as you do a cow and the rabbit will produce six times as much. It's very special. Rabbit gestation is only 20 or 32 days. You can have a lot of meat. You can produce a lot of meat in one year hundreds of pounds for one rabbit. So it's just good math, it just makes sense. These rabbits don't take up a lot of space, they don't make a lot of noise, they don't howl at the moon. There's so many reasons why to raise rabbits. When you process them, they, they take a fraction of amount of time compared to a chicken. And there's a lot of things you can use on the rabbit as well. You know, animal husbandry, again, raising animals for you know, genetic characteristics, trying to make that perfect animal and, as, and use the animal uh, and on all facets, you know, to specialize in meat and furs. Raising domesticated rabbits, this, this tradition has gone on for hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's nothing new. And it's maybe new to folks that have been living in the city, but there's been programs that have been involving families with raising rabbits and farming rabbits for so long, you know, several generations. Your grandpa or grandma could tell you all about it. Often I hear folks saying that, why would you process a rabbit? It's not even nutritious. Well, that's, that's wrong. That's flat out wrong. Rabbit is incredibly nutritious. It's, it's an essential helping of vitamins and nutrients, B12, B2, uh, high protein levels, 21 grams per 100 grams. And folks say, well, you're gonna get protein poisoning. You're gonna starve. You know, that's, nobody's, work, nobody's living a diet where they're not having any fats. So it's different, you know, you're gonna starve on elk. You're gonna go and starve on moose. You're gonna starve on deer. You're gonna starve on, uh, what else is, um, bison. You know, these are all high proteins, low fat, lean animals. So what does that mean? It means you can have a rabbit meal and not gain weight. And the most special thing about rabbit is their ability to produce so much meat. You can produce as much as a cow. And we have a program that shows you how to take four 
unrelated rabbits and build a thousand pound production after one year. If you'd like to see that, I'll put a video up in the corner. So we've talked about what chemicals are in that meat in the stores. We've talked about why folks may consider growing their own meat. And we've talked a little bit about the challenges. What does rabbit meat taste like? Well, rabbits make their way through the woods just like turkey, just like deer, and these animals are eating a lot of leaves and sticks and woody browse. And to me, I think that's why a rabbit tastes a little bit more like a turkey than it does a chicken. You know, folks often say it's just like chicken. I think that's because it's a white meat and it prepares or it takes on the, the taste of the plate, whatever you're preparing, like chicken. It's really easy to make and you can substitute rabbit meat for the chicken in the recipe. Several ways to prepare rabbit meat. And if you wanna get on our website and click rabbit recipes, you can see a bunch of little quick videos. With any livestock animal, you're going to have toughness the older it gets, tenderness if it's a, it's a younger animal. So when it comes to rabbits, it's called roaster if it's 12 weeks or over or it's called fryer if it's under 12 weeks. I recommend purchasing a, a fryer so you can taste that really tasty rabbit meat. I'm not saying that rabbits over 12 weeks are not good, it's just they're tough and you have to prepare them differently. So roast it or slow cook it uh, where you can, you can get a good taste still. But when it comes to under 12 weeks, I mean you can grill it, you can fry it, you can just cook it a little faster. So where do you find rabbit meat? I would recommend Googling rabbit breeder near me. That way you can help out a local breeder and also you can find some fryer, some tender fryer meat. Uh, it's really tough to find a fryer in the store. In most cases those rabbits have a contract, or those rabbit uh, farms have a contract with the stores that they're going to produce you know, five or six pound rabbits, and in most cases those are mature rabbits, so our roasters rather. And we have a lot more information on our website, harvesting tools, and, and I'm sure you've heard us about our courses. We have mini courses as well as full, full courses to help you guys get started and, and start a real rabbitry business, start selling rabbits like you've never sold. So please let me know if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. You know, if you folks are receiving angry emails from, from folks that just don't have any experience in 4-H, FFA, things like that, then, you know, in most cases, you probably just don't even want to entertain them with an argument. So, you know, because it's going to take up a lot of time and your time is valuable. I know you're busy, especially if you're running a rabbitry and, and most of us have a day job too. So, but thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.